I've now got Gary Lawson with me, and this is an interview or chat that I have always wanted to do, and to be able to have the opportunity to have a chat with a guy now who has won 13 New Zealand titles over a number of years, won them in all disciplines, and of course at this particular event has won both that of the peers and the fours, and as Gary was just telling me, this is the third time that he's been involved in a team and the team collectively have won all disciplines at the national. So, I know you've won 13, mate, but how does you know, how's this one sort of, you know, what's it sort of feel like? Oh, uh, fantastic. They're all special, and um, they're special for different reasons, but I think when you get out there and you get into it, it's like we're in a New Zealand final and you never know when it's going to be your last one. That's right. And I'm, I'm a great believer that you've got to try and, you know, you act like it's your first one. and. and they all seem special to me, and I can remember them all like they were yesterday, and they're just fantastic. I mean, and the other thing is, you know, I've, I've lost six finals, so I understand the disappointment of losing, and they're hard, you know, it's difficult. I don't think you can ever learn to be happy to have lost them. So if I go way, way, way back, and, you know, the son of Stan and Kit, and of course, you, 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 you know, you started playing bowls with Dad at an early age, didn't you? Oh, look, when he was out playing Sunday tourneys, we, you know, Gary Watson, myself, you know, we used to go out after they'd finished and we were only like six, seven years old. We started chucking them up at Linwood and St Albans and boys, the, the old fellas would be having a few beers and we'd be throwing them up there and then Kit would come and pick us all up and away we go home, it'd be nine o'clock at night, you know. <laughs> and we're, we're loving it. And I, I, yeah, well, I remember Stan in that great... At that, at that, at Wollstone, that uh, in the singles, that great. Were you, you were you there that that year when the uh, the uh, the semi-finals and finals on the Sunday at Wollstone? Yeah. That was a, yeah. you know, he <laughs> that was going to be the day, wasn't it? Well, he, he he won it in '68, and down in Dunedin here, and um, he beat a guy called Hector Ballantyne in the final, and um, then in, in I think it was seventy. Four, I think, or 70, whatever. No, it was actually later than that. It was actually 1978, actually. He played the semi final and he won, and then he lost to John Malcolm in the final. That's right. And John Malcolm, had, I think, was like trailing Jim Scott, something like 20 to 10, 28. Went, uh, the score was 17 6 was at one yeah. stage. And then, yeah, you're right, it got out to 20 to 7, and, and he went on to win. Yeah. Now, um, so sport's been a very important part of your life, hasn't it? You know, because you're a pretty handy rugby player, aren't you? Well, in those I, young days, yeah. Oh, look, I played. It was, a, it was a great story. I played. There was quite a good young first five eight at the same time, wasn't there? Well, I played senior rugby for Miraville when I was about nineteen, twenty, and um, you know, because I tried to play tennis, and you know, I had a New Zealand ranking at that. It wasn't good enough there. So then I came. I was playing rugby. Not always played rugby, and we played at um, Sheldon Park, and we played Belfast. And the opposite number ten was uh, Wayne Smith. And at the end of the game, you know, like. Him and Kieran Kane, who was playing fullback, was also an all-black at the time. They ran a mark. And um, afterwards, you know, we had the change. She's had a beer. And then I put my jacket on my, and, you know, tie. And I walked in and I bought Wayne Smith a quart bottle of beer because that's what boys drank in those days. You know that from Maris days. And um, I walked up to him and I said, um, well played, mate. You know, you were brilliant. And I knew my career was over when he looked at me and he said, cheers, mate, what position did you play? <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually brought it up with him, you know, since when he was with Steve Hansen and he just laughs. Oh, I wouldn't have said that. And Steve said, no, you did, mate. He said, Gaz has told the story that many times. <laughs> so then I knew I wasn't going to be an All Black, so then I thought I'd better focus on a sport that I might be able to play for New Zealand, and that was bowls. So, now, so you know, you, you've... And look, I'll be honest about this, mate. I don't think a lot of people know how much effort that you put into comes national time. You know, look, I'll go back to those World Bowls in 2008 when you won the gold and the pairs and the singles. And by the way, um, Stick was back on the great Russell Meyer. He was back on this morning from the UK following you. And of course, he was in that 2008 side. But just tell us about I know how much preparation you put in. I know what you did. So what was it all about? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm a, one of those great believers and. You know, I've learnt through the years that it's, you know, you don't win the Melbourne Cup on the first Tuesday in November. It's all about preparation and, you know, and I'm a mate with Steve Hansen and he talks, you, you notice he always talks about preparation and it, it's it's not what happens on the day, it's what you do the days before that and I don't like turning up the Nationals and knowing that I'm not 100% prepared so 
you know, the, the weeks leading into it, I'm a pain in the neck, mate. The, my family and friends hate me because I, I won't go out, I won't party, I don't go to any Christmas parties and I just train and I get up at five in the morning and I go to the gym and I practice and I just want to, I, I don't know, I, because I think I just love winning. And But I'd like to, I want people to, when they beat me, I want them to play well. See, it's interesting, Gary, you made those comments because there's a lot of people out there in the public fraternity, in the body fraternity, who only ever see Gary Lawson on the green or what they read or hear about Gary Lawson on the green or whatever. I know, but a lot of people don't know, how committed you are when you enter an event, you're not there to come second, are you? Oh, look, I've given people some ammunition in my life, you know, like every now and again, you know, I've overdone the party stuff and, and had a good time and made mistakes, you know, geez, there's no doubt about that, I have made some bad mistakes. But when I get committed and I decide that it's time to to play, I can, people don't understand, like even my mates go, God, he can just switch, turn the switch, and you know, once I decide that, right, this is what I need to do, this is what I want to achieve, I can just totally focus on that, and um, I think it's sometimes you've got to be a little bit selfish, but at the end of the day, when you get, I, I just love to come in here, if we got beaten today, or I got beaten yesterday, whatever, I could have walked away going, well, at least I, put, I knew I couldn't do any more. Yep. I like the last, you know, four or five weeks, I've just trained hard. And like I, one of the young fellas the other day, um, he said, geez, I've got sore legs. I've played every day for eight days. And like I said to McElroy, um, Shan, I said, mate, I'm 100% because I've trained hard in the gym and I, I know my body's ready to play. I, yeah, could, I, I could start the tournament again tomorrow. I, I, I know you prepare yourself. I know how, how and, and to me, you know, like I was here the other night as a case in point and you were playing here the day after or whatever it was. But you still came here that evening and still chucked up a dozen bowls through just to get the feel, what it feels like, and that's what you do, don't you? Well, leading from Ali, so I came down and, and like I hadn't had any runners, obviously for a couple of days, and I knew I was playing third from the next day, and I don't want to get up there and all of a sudden the first one comes out, like, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. And I'm a great believer, like, when I, I practice running shots, I mean, a lot of people like attacking, and they think they're good at it, but, you know, Ali will tell you, you know, 60% is pretty good. I, when I train, and poor old Jim and my little girl, she, she comes down and throws them back at me. I, I don't leave until I'm at 80, 80%. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's, I suppose as well, that's the Australian philosophy, isn't it? If you're not, a, if you're not at 80 plus, you're not really there, are you? Yeah. That's, that, that's the way you know, it's, that's the way it's approached, isn't it? And I'm, you know, and you train, you, you get that muscle, you know, awareness of the fact that, you know, you're under pressure, you need your body to be able to say, well, I know where I'm going, I know what my technique's going to do. And, and I think that um, if you prepare yourself well and you train hard enough, that they are the moments when you prepare well. Like Shannon McElroy, I don't believe people even understand how fit he is. Like, he's actually really strong. Young he, man. he is exceptionally fit. He is. Yeah. He's got, he, is, he is. No question about that. Mm. So now we're 13 titles, world ch- now, You know that, that yesterday, that Piers final out there, that's never going to be repeated, I don't think. <laughs> you know, 30... 33 national titles or something, six world gold medals, bronze, silver, world, Commonwealth Games, you know, that's... You could probably imagine if it was a fours game, but not in pairs. Not in pairs, no. no, no. It was pretty amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and, um, you know, I, I kind of, you look at it, and you, you look at Peter Bialis, and, and you, a lot of the time you think, oh, you know, he's, he's probably not the same man that he was 10 years ago, but he just keeps coming up and playing brilliant. And like for a long time in that game, he played unbelievable. He did play. He did. He and I did. think it's the old story. You know, it doesn't matter if you, as long as you still got the uh, desire and the determination, he's got it. You can still play brilliant. Well, I thought Peter and I remarked to him about it. You know, at first, I thought he looked the best he'd looked for ages, and and he, he had that that old Peter Bella spring in the heel, yeah. stand tall, stand erect, and let it go. And you know, he's. He's still up there, isn't he? He's still a good well, player. I, I, look, I played a lot with him, with New Zealand, and I, so obviously I know what his delivery's like, and he was letting them go silk. They were like silk. The they only were. thing, a couple of times he drove, and it wasn't like he put 100% like, like he used to the old days, but in the, you know, I'm not sure if he thought he was running or driving, but <laughs> he's still got that amazing touch, and um, you actually, and he's got that uh, mentality where you're never really quite sure what he's thinking. Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's, yeah, he's very deep. And he's very, I'm not saying introverted in his thinking, but he knows, he's, one of, he's like yourself, his thinking is something two or three shots ahead of, what, of, of what's going to happen. And I, you know, I'm, again, no disrespect to the guys that you played in the final this morning, but you know, I said there on a couple of ends, I mean, you picked a three up when they started searching, so to speak, at about bowl four or five. And, you know, 
Second, you don't have to have the shot all the time. Second shot's good, it's good going, and you build from there, don't you? Yeah. Look, they were they were pretty impressive, and and you're right. They, I think, probably just you know a couple of times they just didn't quite read it right. But you know, saying that they were only a bowl or two away from winning. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and and fours is not generally a game where the young sides come out and win. And they, I thought they were pretty outstanding. The whole lot of them, they, they didn't panic much and. Maybe the last two or three ends here, they just weren't quite with it. But in saying that, like, Sheldon hit that short one. If that goes on to the jack, we're only one in front with two to play, yeah, you know? Yeah, different game. So, you know, we... You know, but I, was, I, I think what we did really well this whole tournament was we knew we had a little bit of a target on our foreheads and back <laughs> and whatever, and we hung really tough. You oh, know? you we did. Hung tough, no, you, you know, did. The and you, like, you just built as you went. Now, so th- everything's happened to you. Now, look, and I'm going to ask the hard question, mate. Gary Lawson playing for New Zealand. Look, I, I, after the Nationals last year, um, I thought, well, maybe I might get, you know, the selectors might have a chat to me. And I haven't heard from them for 12 months, um, which is a little bit disappointing. And then I said to uh, my mates and my friends and my family, and I said, look, if I'm not back in the New Zealand team after the Nationals next year, I'm going to go and have a real good crack. I said, you know, there's not much point me going back to the Nationals because I don't want to play if there's no chance of playing for New Zealand because at the end of the day you know whether you got 10, 11, 12 now it's 13 New Zealand titles I mean how many do you need? I mean I always thought it'd be great to win one. Absolutely. And to win 13. And I've heard you say that on more than one occasion. But I'm you know getting to that age where my you know James is you know she's 15 and you know she'd like to spend Christmas at Wanaka every year or go somewhere else and and if if I'm going to keep coming to the Nationals there needs to be a reason and I need to be able to say, well, look, there's a chance to do this and do that. And she'd love me to play for myself. Good. Um, so, you know, if, if that opportunity's not there, I can't see much point in me coming back. I, I hear what you say. And I, look, I think I can speak on behalf of a pretty broad bowling populace in saying this, Gary, that, you know, and I've said this on air this week, you know, you, you don't go to Commonwealth Games to blood players or development. You, you, and because, as you and I both know, Funding plays an important part for uh, these events for Bowls New Zealand. You go there to win, don't you? Look, mate, on behalf of all the bowlers around New Zealand and Australia and around the world, I know that, that mate, we, we, we stand up and clap and applaud uh, what you've achieved as, as Gary Lawson, the person, and without doubt now the, the legend of, uh, of bowl. Well, 13 New Zealand titles, mate, that's just, you know. Oh, look, look Kev, I, I've had you know, hundreds of texts in the last couple of days and, you know, there's a lot of people out there who have been really fantastic to me, not just this week but in my whole career. But I'll tell you what, seriously, the number of people that have just loved the, what you've done and what Bowls New Zealand have done as far as the, the coverage this week has been fantastic. People just have really enjoyed it and the fact that they, because, I mean, so long ago, like, who's winning, no one has a clue. <laughs> and, the, you know, like, you know, your, your, your Grant Hassels, and I mean, what a, what a great man when it comes to the game. I mean, he just has such a passion and a knowledge. I mean, you ask him who played the quarters in 1978, and he'll tell you, you know. Absolutely. Well. I mean, the guy's a machine, you know. And Sam Morton, he's, he's, he's just a young fella starting. And yeah, he's good. doing a good job. But, you know, like, people love it. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people out there who just love the game, and they, they, they've really enjoyed the coverage, and I think that's really important. I mean, and I think, you know, when you get a guy like yourself and then and Hassel, the two guys with so much passion, it can only be great for the game. Well, you know, I'm delighted, mate, at the response that we've had, like, all around the world. You know, I've had people from all around the world joining us and, and talking, etc. and... Uh, I think it's a great innovation from Bowls New Zealand, and long may it continue because it, it it does. That I'm sure you would agree. You know, we've seen we've seen the, the bad things, and the one thing that the sport lacks is positive promotion, isn't it? And positive communication, and, and I think we've achieved that at long last. I, I think we've achieved that here. Oh, look, you know, I think that you know Mark Cameron. One of the great things that he's already brought to the game is like he's so honest about the fact that he doesn't know much about it, <laughs> but he has great ideas and, yeah. and and one of them was this what he's done here as far as the communication level goes has been fantastic and and i think he's um he's a bloke that you know he, he's got great ideas and but he's he's also got the ability to listen to others that oh, have been absolutely. around the game for a while absolutely and, and maybe the game hasn't had that for a while no i <laughs> i think it's a breath of fresh air and i've had the opportunity to meet with him on a few occasions and 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 you're right um 
um, visibility is now with us and communication is now with us and that's got to be a positive, doesn't it? Absolutely, 100%. Thanks, mate. Congratulations again. Cheers. Mate, and Jeff, proud of what you've done. Good on you, mate.